Good morning, Steve. How are you doing? Good, Melanie. How are you doing? Pretty good, thank you. Good, How was your great. weekend? It was great. I, uh, I was outside an awful lot taking advantage of the weather. I, I went out and I bicycled a lot. Nice. Did some fishing. It was great. I, uh, for me, it was a good stress reliever um, because when I fly fish, I'm actually out all by myself, right? There's, there's not a lot of people around. And so that was good because I know people's levels of stress seem to be going up and there was yeah. so much negativity that I thought I just needed to get away. Yeah. What have you been noticing when you've been out in the, in the middle of other people in the community? Well, uh, you know, a, a good example for me is, is going to the grocery store. So you remember at the beginning when COVID was at its peak and, and the stores were taking precautions and what I always commented there jokingly, but I was serious, mm -hmm. is that I find a lot of people back then were a lot more tolerant of each other when you're shopping. Yes, people yes. weren't so aggressive. Yes. Uh, people were more polite. They'd let you in line. Yep. Um, you know, people were apologizing if they were, you know, moving in front of people. And I noticed yeah. the weekend when I went grocery shopping, all that's gone. Oh, boy. People seem to be a lot more aggressive that way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. People seem to be a lot more short. Yeah. We are moving into our fifth month yes. of the coronavirus pandemic and of the shutdown here in Canada. Yeah. And I think that it's normal and natural and obvious that people are really reaching their limits. Yes. You know, like even the amount of people that aren't wearing masks anymore or the amount of people that are congregating and not social distancing anymore. Um, and like you said, you know, even in the midst of all that, people who are just tired of the lineups or they're tired yes. of being indoors or things not being open or, or, you know, only certain, so many people being able to, to go in at one time. Yeah. yeah right it's there. taken away, um, it's taken away a lot of our, our routines that we had that we yes. took for granted. So even something simple as going for a swim in a pool, a friend of mine was telling me that she has to reserve a spot now. Wow. And you only do it for like an hour. Yeah. Um, oh my Tiny goodness. little things like that or, um, you know, there's lineups everywhere you go, right? There's, there's lineups for almost everything and people. And I've noticed two or three times people get really impatient and just swear and cuss and then walk away. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and after then, spending just five minutes standing in line. Yeah. And then on top of that, there seems to be judgments being made, you know, judgments about who's, um, you know, what we're, whether wearing a mask is good or bad judgments yeah. about who deserves to be at the front of the line or who deserves to be out at all or you know so people are really kind of um struggling because they're making value on these different safety protocols or, or even people within our community yeah and i find i'm actually i have to be honest with you i was surprised at the anti-mask demonstration mm -hmm. um, me too because for me wearing a mask if that's if that's one of the things I have to do, and, and it's to me, it's not that big a deal, then I'm just going to do it. Yeah. So I'm having a hard time comprehending what people's opposition to wearing a mask is all about. You know, Steve, I think so much has been taken away from us, our freedoms to socialize, our freedoms to just leave our house, our freedoms to just go about our business. I think so much has been taken away that perhaps people are fighting to, to retain, to yeah. keep hold of as much of their own control as they possibly can. Yeah, I, I agree. What that reminds me of is that, you know, each and every one of us has a window of tolerance. Mm -hmm. And what that is, I'm going to show you a little graphic that I've made here. Each and every one of us has a space. So figuratively, not, not literally, but, you know, we have this space where we can feel calm. So what I mean by that is each of us has a sense of balance in our lives where yes. if you know things are going pretty good or even if the problems that do arise like oh gosh what should i make for supper i can solve that problem pretty easy or um hmm, boy you know um my dentist wasn't available when i wanted him to be so i just changed it to another day which isn't quite as good but problems that i can deal with we stay within this comfortable window of tolerance which is where yes. we feel comfortable peaceful calm competent pretty satisfied with life and yeah. therefore pretty happy. But sometimes life deals us some events and experiences that are too difficult 
to stay yeah. to, to to manage and stay within our window of tolerance. Mm -hmm. That can be one big event, like for example, you know, having your house um, disappear in a fire, or it can be losing a spouse or losing a parent uh, to death. Or even, you know, this kind of thing, which is the coronavirus comes and threaten, threatens us all health-wise, but also takes away lots of our freedom to move around and be with people. Yes. Um, so that can, so we can be shoved out of our window of tolerance by one or two big events, or we can be shoved out by many little out-of-control events that have been piled up on top of each other that we haven't been able to manage as they come. So the pile of trouble just kind of gets bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger and bigger. Yeah, and it just adds in, onto the, the, the original issues, right? It just it gets the number increases. That's right, yeah. 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 Now, this is just a basic idea of window of tolerance, but you know, some folks have quite a narrow window of tolerance. They're the folks that, get pretty riled up pretty quickly when something comes yeah. their way that was unexpected. So you might think, well, hmm, you know, uh, I don't know why that would bother that person, but it may be because their window of tolerance is just more narrow. Whereas other people, you know, I mean, they can deal with pretty much anything and it just doesn't seem to bother them. I mean, it takes a lot for them to get pissed off. Then they, they have quite a much like a bigger window of tolerance. Yeah. The, the, the hopeful and the positive thing is that even for us that have this little window of tolerance, we can create and grow and learn how to have a larger window of tolerance and deal with more things in our life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So when we're nudged out of our window of tolerance, we can, we either go into hyper arousal or mm -hmm. hypo arousal. So I'm going to talk about hyper arousal first. Not that it's more common. It's not. Um, but I'll just, for ease sake, just pick one to start with. So hyper arousal. Um, a person can get a feeling of hyper arousal if they start to feel really agitated. Um, they might feel angry mm -hmm. or they might feel really anxious and worried. And so it's an increase of energy. Um, it's like you're hyper alert or hyper agitated. And so people might start yelling or shouting or, you know, just doing something like trying to fix the problem by being overdoing um, in, you know, whatever they're trying to fix. Um, let's see, people might also um, feel, uh, be impulsive. So they might go out and, buy something that they think might fix yeah. the problem or even just to make themselves help themselves feel better mm -hmm. um that that sorry yeah. what were you gonna say i just it, for me that really resonates that hyper arousal because um i notice that in myself when i'm it's almost like you're looking for a quick fix yeah you, you can sense that something's going on so when you mentioned going out and purchasing thing or something like that yeah. it's it's such a um it's a wrong path to go down to because you end up spending money and purchasing something you normally wouldn't want yeah. on the pretense that it's going to make you feel happy, but it doesn't. Yeah, that's right. And then you get angry with yourself because you thought, oh, this is such a waste of money. Why did I do that? Right. It's just a vicious circle. And I, I yeah, I see when you're in hyper arousal, you just, you, so long, you can't move anywhere. Things are just happening way too much. Yeah. It's almost like a buildup of energy. This, anxious yeah. or angry energy that you just have to get out you know and so yeah. some people find themselves lashing out at others so this is this may be where you find people in the grocery store you know grumbling because somebody shouldn't have nudged in line or or yelling at the customer service because why is this taking so long oh absolutely yeah i've noticed that in the last while that uh, people's uh, level of patience has really decreased a lot so i've noticed going out in everyday activities especially when you're going out shopping and, and people are on errands and things like that, is they get really, really impatient way more than they have before. So yeah. to the point sometimes where they'd be rude to the staff because they have to wait in a lineup outside the store. Yep. They don't want to deal with that. And so for me, um, I'm very cognizant of that when I go outside shopping or something like that, or even grocery shopping, that it's going to be a bit stressful. Yes. I need to be patient. 
That's right. I need to be more tolerant because I, I know that. that's going to happen, right? Yes. I love that, that you're already knowing that this is a possibility for you as well as the people around you. Yes. So you're purposely doing things, thinking things, saying things to yourself to keep you as much as possible in this window of tolerance. Yes. I think it's important though. For me, it's important for me to know um, how I'm feeling in that hyper arousal scenario, yeah. right? So being yeah. impatient, um, yeah. not sleeping, um, yeah. just feeling generally anxious. Yeah. I think it's, I'm really, I think I've become a lot more sensitive to that in the last four or five months. Yes. With my body, I can really tell it's, it's, you know, physiologically, I clench my jaw. Yes. And I yeah. frown, I find, um, yeah. and I bunch up my shoulders. Yes. Yeah, so you might start right? to feel neck aches and. Yeah. So I, I, as soon as I start feeling that, I just, if I can, I, I can just stop and stretch out a little bit and, and do some breathing. Yeah. So it, it, staying in here for you is about being, uh, you may be doing some breathing exercises, some stretching exercises, going out for a walk. And being present in the moment. Right, yes. Because so, I think a lot of the stress that we're experiencing is because this is such a brand new situation for everybody on the face of this earth. Yes. Um, and so we sh I think we need to accept the fact that yes, it is an anxious time. You're absolutely right. Because I think knowing when you're anxious and defining that you're you're anxious about something mm -hmm. helps you increase that window of tolerance because you That's can right. identify that yeah the more that we move into hyper arousal and then purposely do things to help us calm and get back yes. into our window of tolerance the bigger our window becomes yes yeah so it's yeah. an amazing learning opportunity we don't have to be ashamed or embarrassed or feel guilty no. about it it's really just being able to acknowledge it, say, oh, okay, I went into hyperarousal. Now, how can I move back into my comfort yeah. zone and start, um, you know, just moving on with, with yeah. happiness and joy and peace? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's perfect. Now, this is my default. Um, some people, for them, this is the one that they tend to go to when they get knocked out of their, when the stress comes along and they get knocked out of yeah. their window of tolerance. But for other people, their default might be hypo arousal. Okay. I mean, it's just as easy, arousal, it's just as easy for us to go up into hyper and into hypo. I mean, I've been in both, I'm sure, at some point in my life. It's just that I more often go to this area. Okay. But hypo arousal is another option for us to move into when we have been knocked out of our comfort zone, when things okay. are just not going very well and we're not solving our problems or, or helping ourselves get back on track very well. And, and sometimes getting back on track actually is out of our control. I mean, when we're going through grief over a lost loved one, there's not much you can control about grief. It just kind of yeah. takes you like a wave, like you're in a boat on the ocean and it just takes you for your ride and you're just riding the waves until, mm -hmm. you know, you get to, to, to safety. Um, and with this coronavirus, so much of it is out of our control as well. So sometimes we just have to manage the stress okay. and, and the, the confusion and just do what we can until we do find some problem or some, some solutions to the problem. You know, like when we do find the vaccine or we do find out um, what we can do to really keep ourselves healthy around the coronavirus, that kind of thing. Hypoarousal would um, be the place that you're at if you find yourself numb, shut down, apathetic. Okay. You know, you're getting to the point where you're like, I just don't care anymore. Yeah. Like, whatever. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't, like, whatever. I don't really care. Or I'm not even going to leave the house, actually. I'm just going to stay because, you know, everything out there is just, you know, hopeless anyways, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, even if you're having memory loss, you know, or just having a, a hard time, yeah, remembering what to do, you know, to-do lists or having a hard time processing things, you just feel sluggish. You just feel like everything yeah. in your body, including your mind, has just slow down, you might be in hypo arousal. And the, the trouble with this state, you know, is that you might find yourself just instinctually withdrawing, isolating, pushing people away, not having any interest um, in anything. And so this could really, um, you know, if left for a long time, it could, it could lead to depression as well. Okay. Um, you find Melanie, um, 
that it's hard for, for people to recognize when they are in that hypoarousal because I, I think some of the things that you mentioned about, you know, just spending time by yourself, isolating yourself, sometimes for me, I find those are good defense mechanisms. Yes, yes, right. I think it would be really important to differentiate between you know, I just need, in order for me to get through this change or this okay. stress, I really need some time alone. Like I just, I know that to refuel, and that's true for me, actually, I don't refuel and I, I don't gain in energy by being with people. I gain energy by being by myself. So if yeah. I know that I need this weekend, I just need to chill and just spend some time yeah. alone. I'm going to read, you know, but that's different from being apathetic about it. That's okay. different from, I just don't want to be around people because people are just crazy these days or whatever. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I just, um, I don't want to think like I, it's, it's more of a, if, is it intentional or is it non-intentional? Okay. Is it strategic because you know, you need to get back on track or is it just this, um, oh, what am I trying to say? Like, just this default mechanism that you fall to with, with not even any really th thinking about it. Okay. Almost like a giving up maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important to recognize when you're in either or state. Yes. Both, yes. You know, I think, I think that's important too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wonder what physical cues might give us to hypo arousal. You know, for me, um, um, again, I think I'm, I'm, I'm particularly sensitive to my moods and my emotions. And so yeah. when I think of hypoarousal, I think for me, I become really lethargic. Yeah. And just, you know, almost to the point of becoming like a couch potato. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I recognize that too. And I, and I know for me, it's good for me to go out and go outside and to be physically active. I know that. Uh, that's the advantage of getting old and living yeah. with yourself, right? Over the years, you get to understand some of those things. So I, I do it for both. I, I, you know, go back and I also think for, yeah. for either hyperarousal or hypoarousal, I go back to those breathing exercises you taught us in the previous sessions and how about it's important to be mindful and live in the present. That's right. So again, that's from that emotional, if I'm in either or state, I, I really focus about things that that I, at the very present time, that I have control of. Because I find sometimes I could see for myself, it gets so overwhelming reading the news and yes. while watching the TV news, is that sometimes there's so much, I just have to shut it down. Absolutely, yeah. Right, and I think that leads to a lot of anxiety, a hyper arousal or hypo arousal. Some people just give up and say it's, it's useless, it's futile. Yep, that's right, yep. I think hypoarousal for me too would be that lethargy that I just don't have any energy for this. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it could also be like, I, I don't want to eat. Like I, I would lose my appetite or I might actually overeat. Like I might kind of just, you know, take a tub of ice cream and spend my night with my ice cream. Um, it might be just mindlessly binging on Netflix shows yep. over and over yeah. and over again. You know, but again, it's that being lost in the numbness. So when I, yes. when I do start thinking about how I feel, it's all very negative. There's no sense of, um, you know, um, I haven't, yeah. So the differences between, you know, just shutting down and, and checking out on purpose is that knowing that it's for my health, whereas defaulting to hypoarousal is just as, um, a reaction, a reaction. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. yeah that's a perfect word. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, again, this is normal, you know, and sometimes people have to go there to be able to move themselves back up into their window of tolerance because that becomes the cue. Oh, crow. I don't seem to care about this and I really think I should care about this. So I need to do some strategies to get myself back into my comfort zone. Okay. Like connecting with people. Even yeah. if I don't feel like it, my brain is saying it's probably a good idea because it's been three weeks since I talked to anybody. <laughs> yeah. So getting out and, and, and connecting with people, you know, or um, uh, getting some exercise, fresh air, you know, just going yeah. out and doing things and getting yourself back on track. So I'm wondering, um, Melanie, do you think people, the most important thing for people to do is to be aware of their own, what their own window of tolerance is and what that means? Yes, yes. And being, 
using mindfulness is really important because as we, as we do mindfulness practice, we learn how our body is feeling in relationship to how we're, what we're thinking. Um, and yeah. knowing those little, those little cues that our body will give us when we're starting to get stressed. So, you know, even noticing the little bit of muscle tension before it becomes so sore that we need to go see a massage therapist, noticing the little changes allow us to perceive when we're being nudged closer out of our window of tolerance before we actually just jump out and, ah, you know, crap hits the fan kind of thing. Yeah, interesting. That's good. And like you were saying earlier, one of the things that I really notice when I'm being nudged out of my comfort zone is I start thinking things that aren't rational, oh, aren't yeah. helpful. I'm going around and around in circles trying to solve a problem that actually, if I really realized, if I really took time to think about it, it isn't really solvable. Or at the very least, my thinking about it over and over and over again isn't solving the problem. I need something more than that. Yeah. And yeah. That's, that's when I know that I'm being nudged out of my window of tolerance. And so I wanted to offer people a mindfulness today that we could use to um, acknowledge our thoughts, those thoughts Good. that come, that fill us up with that negativity. They sometimes, you know, sometimes the event itself doesn't kick us out of our window of tolerance. It's our thoughts about the event. Yes, you're right. Kick us out, right? Yeah, so, so those negative thoughts. Yeah, the catastrophizing, the what ifs, the, oh my yeah. gosh, I'm never going to survive this, the negative self-talk, you know, that's what actually kicks us out of our comfort zone. So if we could do a mindfulness today on what to do with those thoughts, that, that might be, be helpful. Yeah, that would be helpful. All right, well, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on our breathing like I often do um, because of the time that we have in this video, but also because I know that... Um, Focusing on breathing isn't um, relaxing for some people. So I'm just gonna ask you to get into a comfortable position. Just put your feet, both feet on the floor and just breathe normally. Close your eyes if you want, keep them open if you want. Just if you keep them open, focus on something that won't move, won't distract you. And then just breathe normally. And just imagine your whole body relaxing to that breath. So just making a quick scan from the top of your head to the tips of your toes, just quickly scanning your body and seeing if you can soften any parts just a little bit more. So if your eyebrows are a little tense, just see if you can soften your eyes a little more just to add a little more relaxation to that part of your body. I notice that my body softens and relaxes a little bit more with each out breath. So as I intentionally breathe out of my body, I'm able to relax whatever part of my body still seems to be holding on to a bit of tension. Like my belly, my legs, my ankles my toes. And as you're focusing on the different parts of your body, bringing softness and relaxation to those parts, it's likely that your mind will bring to it your attention some thoughts. The thoughts may be positive or negative in nature. The thoughts may be about the past, the present, or the future. And there's no need to follow those thoughts, to let those thoughts become you or get bigger than what they already are. Just acknowledging those thoughts, knowing that they are there and knowing that they're there because your brain is doing exactly what it's meant to do. I want you to imagine though, bringing out a bottle of bubbles, the bubble solution that kids might play, on a, play with on a warm summer day. Imagine having a jar of bubble solution and reaching into that jar and pulling out the bubbles wand. And I want you to imagine 
as you're breathing into the bubble's wand, filling the bubble up with air just before it's released from the wand, I want you to imagine collecting the negative thoughts that you're having, whatever those may be, collecting those in your breath. So for example, you might breathe in and imagine collecting those thoughts within your breath. And then imagine as you blow out your air into the bubble wand to make the bubble. Imagine those negative thoughts following your breath along and being put into the bubble that you are now forming as a result of your out breath. So blowing into the bubble and seeing the bubble <clears throat> form on the other side as it closes in over top of those negative thoughts and the bubble releases from the bubble wand and it floats into the air and watch it go. There goes your negative thoughts, the stress, the fear, the anger, the self-blame, the guilt, whatever it is, there it goes. And as all bubbles do, it'll reach a point in the atmosphere when it pops and imagine that as it pops all of those thoughts are released and disappear never to be seen again and then come back to your body to your breath and when another negative thought comes to mind or a stressful thought or a uncomfortable thought again imagine taking that thought and breathing it into your breath collecting it and then slowly releasing it on the out breath through the bubble wand into the bubble that forms and then watching as that bubble slowly melts and floats away into the clouds the atmosphere and then spontaneously pops and allows those negative thoughts to disappear forever. You can do this over and over for as long as you like. You can pause this video and just stay here in this moment, focusing on your breath and your body and the blowing of the negative thoughts into the bubble. For as long as you need to, the bubble wand is available to you. And then for purposes of this video, as this mindfulness comes to a close, you may notice the sounds around you even more. You may want to slowly move in whatever way feels comfortable. And then as you're ready, slowly opening your eyes and returning to this conversation. How was that, Steve? That was excellent. Yeah. As you were talking about it, I was thinking that that's a really good exercise. You could do it almost anywhere. Yeah. I mean, you could do it before a job interview if you're really anxious about that. You could do it on a C train or better yet, you could do it on some of the lineups that we're experiencing to do yes. stuff. Yes. So instead um, of getting upset and impatient. Yes. Yes. Just. Bring out your imaginary yeah. bubbles and imagine yourself on a warm, sunny day, just blowing them away. Yeah. 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 And I really like the visualization of the bubble just sort of dissipating into the air. Yeah. Into nothingness. Nothingness. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Letting the no, clouds was, take it. Yeah. That was good. I'm going to practice that all this week. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if with that, uh, this beautiful weather continues. It's just such a, delight for me to imagine or to look at the clouds in these beautiful days and imagine those bubbles just floating upwards. Yes. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, you'll still be around next week. So we'll see you then. I will. Okay. Right. Enjoy your week. Thanks again, Melanie. We'll Thank you, you, Steve. You bet. Bye everybody. Bye -bye. Take care.